Okay, my name is Gara Kamsky. I am uh, have a nickname of Dark Nolan Chess 24. I've been there for several years, maybe three, four years. Well, I'm playing match versus a very talented uh, women I am player. And um, let's see what happens. Okay. And I'm waiting for the signal to start the game. And um, let's see. I don't see anything yet. Well, one thing is I, I can move, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to play my trusty London system. You guys all know me playing London system, right? So I'm curious what will be my opponent's setup. Okay, she is uh, waiting for the move, or probably permission. Again, there are no increments in here, and uh, that gives her, uh, my opponent a lot of chances to try to flag me. Um, uh, and, of course, uh, probably catch me in some of my pet lines in the opening. Okay, but we'll see. Uh, I actually have 3100 rating here, and this is, looks very nice. You know, it gives me a nice, fuzzy, warm feeling in my stomach. Okay, and we go. So we have London system with d5, and she goes for a main challenge, I guess. There's this little trick with the um, early queen b3, while the pawn is on e6. And the thing is that, uh, oh, she plays e5. Um, I don't know this line, what is this? Uh, looks tricky, but it gives me an extra pawn. Okay, I'll probably hold on to my pawns and pieces and try to do something and develop. I need to develop really fast. Try to put the knight maybe on d4, knight on d2. Try to get rid of the c4 pawn. Eventually, I need to try to break through the e4, but um, I'll have to be careful. Yeah, she probably wants to try to trick my... Um, oh, very aggressive. <clears throat> very aggressive player. Um, I don't know. Can I take on h4, maybe? I should be able to take on h4, but I don't want to create extra problems. If I take on g4, it's safe, but um, then the bishop is hanging. So let's take on g4 <coughs> and play knight d4, maybe. And she takes on h2, I take on f5. Looks, looks okay. I try to bring my second knight to f3 to protect everything. But wow, okay, black is doing actually pretty good here. So, so yeah, so she's prepared for my London system. Uh, and it's very interesting. So take, I need to get rid of that knight on g4. Uh, so she's playing very smart. Okay, so I take here. Queen d2, maybe, try to break through from the d3 square. But I need something with the, um, something to do with the knight on e5. I don't like that knight. He's trying to get me somehow. So, okay, so b3, let's try to open up this position. Maybe f4, maybe take on c4 first. Probably take on c4 first. Hmm, dangerous position. Dangerous position, a4, and I have less time, yeah? Wow. Very dangerous for me. I'll try to get my king to f2, probably try to get some safety. And she is trying to get my, um, get her knight to d3, which I cannot allow, of course. So the question is, uh, can I try to block uh, her attack? And I don't know the answer to that. Um, question because probably my rook has to go to h3. Ah, she can actually take on a3, uh, but she doesn't, and she gives me rook h3 just in time to get my rook into the game. And now I can play for king f1 maybe and try to get away to safety here, which I'm not sure I will be able to because that kind of rook comes to g8 maybe, and um, I'm actually in trouble here. Okay, she plays rook e4, so let's try to exchange stuff and go to, into the end game. try to survive there. Knight b5, create some counter play, counter threats. Uh, I need to get the pawn on h4 somehow. Actually got more time now, which is nice. So it's check, she has to take, knight d6, knight c8, rook e3. Wow, a lot of things are happening. But I think I'm better because uh, after 93, um, 
okay, I still take this guy, play in a king e2, and then I take on h4, maybe king f3 even, but I like to take on h4 first. f5 is a move probably, then I'll have to play here, attack the pawn on f5, we don't blunder the mate obviously, and the king goes forward, the pawn takes on f5, and we get a winning endgame, and it should be winning um, just Pass the pawns, pawns go forward, d 6 f5, f6, it's all very standard, maybe check first, uh, take on b7, just to make sure she doesn't get knight c5 in, so check, check, 6, king d5 maybe, oops, I blunder the knight, okay, that's not good. <laughs> Well, it still should be winning technically, but uh, I just created myself some problems. Take e5, the pawn rolls. The pawn rolls, it should roll, yeah. I need to get rid of this knight. King e5. Uh, well, okay, look okay, 8 c7 is probably the move, but she gives me this queen. Uh, maybe just queen. Yeah, check. And, okay, this should be winning. Okay, and we have a rematch. And uh, wow, I was uh, I was having much worse position in the opening. Yeah, mm, interesting. So I'll probably have to be more careful with how I develop in the opening. At e5, I, I guess probably all theory. I haven't checked London system in a long time. And d5 and e5. Very interesting pawn sacrifice. Um, I think I rematched her, and um, I'm waiting for uh, rematch. I don't know what's going on. So, uh, actually, my first time playing here in the banter blitz. So I have no idea how things work. They told me that I just have to talk to you in the game and uh, um, probably rematch, and I have no idea what happened. So, um, Challenge me, uh, your scores, blitz, uh, I don't know um, what happened here. Ah, challenges, yes, okay, so we have a challenge, accept. Uh, I closed the rematch window, uh, and then I had to accept the new challenge, because when I rematch, uh, she, didn't, she didn't accept. Okay, so I'm going to start again. So here we go, we're going to go for Sicilian, it's going to be Khan Sicilian. I've been playing it for my whole life, so let's see what my opponent comes up with in her preparation. Okay, d5 is not a very popular move, that's the reason why, because white gets the knight to c4 immediately. But I get uh, some sort of um, more or less uh, standard uh, position. Um, white probably gets the pawn on a5. I need to, to develop my king side and queen side. My pawn on b4 is potentially weak or it could be strong. I don't know. It could be both. Okay, so let's take here. And the knight usually goes to f6. And I keep the bishop open, so I need to play bishop e7 and hope for e5. Probably castle or even d6 here. Uh, just to make sure that white doesn't get that uh, square, too many squares, and with castle. And now, of course, the question is, my opponent b4 is going to be feeling lonely. But we have a small tactics here, so let's... Uh, but uh, is it going to be good enough, because she'll play knight b6 and uh, get my exchange, yeah? So let's play with the pawn. Because if she plays knight b6, then I can take on e4 with the tempo, and if she doesn't, then I can uh, attack her king and go for the direct mates, which is um, pretty nice, yeah? So the question is, can I take this pawn on d4 if she plays f3? Um, because if I take then bishop e3, then she plays knight b6, but she plays this move, and of course I take this pawn now, and I play something like queen h4, and... Um, I just get an extra pawn, that knight on the 3 is not doing really much. So that, that's really helpful to me. So let's get our bishop, second bishop maybe goes to d6, create some mating threats, but first we uh, develop our rooks, and um, what are we going to do now? 
So F3 may be the threat, I don't know, but let's try hitting directly and uh, queen f4. And we're gonna go for queen f3 and uh, try to go to the end game. And of course, we like this end game because we have two bishops in a nice position. And the bishop on f3 will be quite annoying. The only thing I don't have a Luft, which I probably need to do anyway. And uh, the question is, where should I put my bishop on d6? Where does it stand best? I don't know. Okay, so let's do the Luft thing. And uh, just in case, we have less time. But we have a power of two bishops. So let's... Uh, no, not, not yet, because she can play rook c2. But if she takes, takes, and I play bishop e7, I get a pair of bishops, and uh, I need to get rid of this light squared bishop. She plays here. Okay, then we play bishop c5. And um, as I said, we go into the end game with a clear consciousness and uh, try to win the game with uh, you know, extra pawn and a very strong bishop, so bishop d5. I will try to stake on c4 and, you know, get the spawn on b4 rolling. So, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, black now has a serious advantage, uh, probably winning advantage. The only thing is now not to spoil this and play careful because uh, that bishop, now she plays like this, and I probably have to take everything M. Take this pawn, and rook d4 is met by a5. Because we don't give that pawn, after I take on b6, the pawn on b3 will also be weak, right? And then rook c6, rook c2, and um, just rook b2, go behind this pawn, take that pawn. And uh, we get the pawn on b3, she probably correct, but then I have rook c3, but I don't want to exchange this, uh, I don't want to exchange rooks yet. So let's bring the king a little bit closer to the game. And let's see how... Ah, actually, she couldn't play bishop b6 because there was a mate, right? So I blundered that part. Okay, so um, so let's go here. Rook c2 anyway. We put the rook on a2 to protect the pawn on a5. And then we're going to start pushing the, um, the b pawn. I can play rook a3, take on b3, and probably go into this particular endgame. Because the rook endgame should be completely winning. And... Um, Let's go up there. So she takes on a5, I take on a5, I play rook b5 and put my king, uh, put my king, uh, you know, to the pawn end game because it's it is completely winning, right? So the rook moves, I play b3. If she takes on b4, so the king goes. Now I play e4. Okay. In that case, my king uh, get the pass pawn here. So that's the Zugzwang, she has to move the king or the pawn, and king f4, okay, so it's rematch, please wait for your opponent to respond to your rematch offer, I don't know, um, waiting for my opponent to respond to my rematch offer, and I was told not to close this uh, rematch window, and I don't see the new challenge, so I guess is that um, waiting for my opponent to. Um, and there is a rematch, and um, let's probably start. So let's play t4, and this time we're gonna play a slightly different version. I'm gonna play knight f3. Um, probably not such a great accurate move order, but uh, it doesn't give black the option to play queen b6 line because in this particular queen b6 line it is playable. Uh, black has to just to play very accurately to equalize in the consequent, uh, I don't know, 100 moves. So bishop f5 is interesting. Um, I haven't seen this particular move in a long time. I have no idea. Probably if I take this pawn then e6 and bishop c5, right? And if I play c3, then e6. Um, I don't know. Okay, so let's play c3, e6, and queen b. Oh, she goes with this one. I see. Um, mm, that's very interesting. So let's try this one. Take the knight d4, because I think this is not an accurate move order by black, because now my knight is ready to go to b5. There is also b1 coming sometimes, and now I have bishop b5 with the tempo. And uh, because of bishop b5, she doesn't have e5, and now after castling and queen a4, I think black seems to be in serious trouble. 
it should be that way. I mean, it's possible uh, that Black can survive this, but um, the second knight goes to f3, e5, and um, okay, so knight e7 is probably correct. And she wants to play e5 now. So the question is, should I play c4? Should I play something wild? Try to go for this. Uh, 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 she wants to play actually take on d4. So um, knight b3, e5, knight c6, b6. A lot of pieces are hanging, so let's take here first. And play bishop a6, and, um, and I don't know, a knight c5 is coming, yeah? A lot of things are coming. Black might actually be quite okay here. So the question is, what should I do? c4 is probably unplayable, so let's bring the knight over. Ah, but black is doing actually good here, I think. Uh, knight c5 is coming, yeah? Uh, should I take uh, play bishop b7, queen d5, maybe? Try to change the tide that way, yeah? Try to get on c6 because uh, that queen is uh, still behind. So bishop g5 or bishop g3 because I want to take on c6 anyway. And I need to get that king. Uh, ooh, I need to take this pawn then. Then I take on b8 and take on c6 with the check. And black still is... Uh, with your king in the center, and that should give me a solid advantage. Uh, so, um, you know, as you see, as you can, guys can see, this is quite a dangerous uh, thing because you you travel with your queen early in the game. You spend two moves uh, to get that pawn on b2, and then uh, you get behind in development. And uh, there are a lot of tactics involved, but um, I think in general the tactics should favor white because you know, okay, very aggressive move. Um, on the other hand, after simple queen d2. That is a pin, right? So the rook c1 comes to get the bishop, and um, I don't know. I don't like. Um, well, okay, black is probably lost anyway, but uh, queen c2 is probably just shortens the, you know, the time because I don't know. Rook f c1, a c1 even works, right? Um, I also want to take on b8 and bishop c6 check. It seems that black is um, just lost to me. And um, time advantage is, of course. See what happens sometimes. You need to think in the opening, even though you get behind. But if you get and manage uh, to find a good setup, the right uh, setup, you know, then uh, it's much easier to play the rest of the game. So sometimes it's good to think in the opening, not just blitz out the first uh, few moves, and actually think about what's going on. So as I said, um, she started well. Ninety seven was a good move, but after that, uh, oh, what happened? Uh, she just resigned. Okay, all right, so, um, um, yeah, so black should probably just take on c3 at some point with the queen, try to bring the queen back, and uh, I don't know, okay, so I'm waiting for my um, rematch to happen. We have, uh, the. it seems that the, in this banter blitz, uh, the first person to get to 8.5 uh, wins the match. Uh, these are not actually rated, I think, uh, games uh, for the purposes of the tournament. And we're going to go for the Slav with the uh, Chebanenka Slav. So it's going to be like London reversed. And uh, it's London both ways, yeah? So A6, except when I played with Chebanenka, I played with the system with G6, which they call the Schlechter line. And uh, so let's see what my opponent prepared for me in this line. Okay, so she she's just playing for his comfortable developments. I usually get rid of this bishop and put him on G4. And take on f3 or on e2 because uh, it's a semi close position. And um, for white, is the only way to break through is either to play c5 and try to push the pawns on the queen side or to go for e4 break and prepare something there. Um, I don't know. Here is the very interesting move to play knight b6, I think. Yeah, try to force white to play something like c5. And then I can go for e5. So my idea is, uh, if white plays c5, b4, a4, b5, pawn push on the queen side, then I respond by a counter push in the center, which is a classic e5, t4, which is the reason why black's bishop on g7 is fianchetto, because he's going to hit um, the pawn on d4 in the center, and then it's e5, he takes d4, knight e4, knight f8, knight e6, knight g5. It's all very standard, and um, so let's see how white responds to this plan. 
In addition, with the white's bishop on d6, now there is a possibility for black to actually play bishop f8 and exchange this bishop. So um, there's a lot of options here. With the a4, I actually think that uh, maybe I can play a5 at some point. So I was thinking about taking on d4 and go with the standard plan, or I can try to exchange this bishop on d6. Yeah. Okay, so let's exchange this bishop on d6 because uh, rook e6 and 98 also is possible, but uh, let's try this one because I, she can't allow me to take on d6, make that weak pawn, so she has to take and probably take somewhere on a fate or on e e5. And as you can see, she just gave up her central pawn, which I think she should not have done, but uh, sometimes it's been done because white gets this d4 square. But uh, when you exchange the pawn on d4, your plan with b5 starts to become somewhat uh, shaky because that c5 pawn becomes weak, potentially. All right, so uh, takes, probably take the king because I uh, like to put my rook back. And now we're going to play a5 and try to, you know, remember I told you about the c5 pawn starting to get weak? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start hitting that pawn. And knight goes back to d7. And we're going to try to see what, how white actually responds to this plan. Um, it was possible that maybe the other knight should be going there. So rook b1 is probably going. And then uh, let's bring our king back here. And I want to play knight f8, knight e6, knight d7. And create a triple threat versus that pawn on c5. So let's see how white responds to that. Actually, I can take on c5 now. Um, but uh, because that pawn on a4 will be hanging in the end, yeah. But okay, let's uh, let's stick with the plan. Play rook here. I mean knight here, and then uh, knight e6. Kick this queen out of t4. And uh, next, I want to play rook c8, rook c7. Ah, so she 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 is doing this. Okay, so the question is. Um, how to proceed in this case, because if I play rook c8, then she plays rook a6, I guess. That's the plan. Although rook on a6 is not that great, so let's play here. And I want to keep an option of playing knight d7 here. But now, right, right now, I actually want to take on c5, probably. So, yeah, I was right, she was playing for rook a6. Um, but now that pawn on c5 is actually hanging, yeah, because I hit the rook with the temple. But she can play with the knight. Actually, I'm thinking, uh, uh, but you still allow me to take on c5, because if knight takes, bishop takes, because I hit the bishop on d3, right? So knight d5, cd5, even if you take on f6, the bishop on d3 is hanging. So white just blundered. Uh, white just blundered. Yeah, so well, white probably should have just played something like knight b1, knight d1, protect this thing on c5, and... Um, as you guys can see, having a good structure is important in your games because it gives you more options and it gives you uh, the right structure, the pawn structure, like Philidor. Um, it gives you squares for your pieces where to play. Okay, so that is why the pawn structure is important. All right, uh, so we have uh, another London system coming, and let's see. All right, let's start with knight of three because if she plays c5, yeah, knight of three is probably more accurate because now black has to. Play knight f6, and now we get to the standard position. And uh, I played last time c3, right? So let's try this move. I think it's not that bad. And the idea is, if black plays e6, I can play knight d4. Right, I just remembered this um, This is possible. And uh, black is usually, yeah, probably has to play something like that. But then after bishop b5, I win an important tempo. And then I can play b4. And that pawn on c5 is now protected, and black is just down a pawn. Okay, so it is actually very tricky, but uh, as you can see, um, white is the pawn up, and uh, very likely I have bishop a6 coming to grab that exchange as well, and black will have to give up uh, the exchange. The question is which bishop she's going to take, the dark squared bishop or the light squared bishop? Yeah, but um, and of course. Uh, yeah, okay, so she goes for this bishop. Um, hmm. All right, so let's give her this bishop. And uh, we're going to probably play, but she wants to play f6 maybe, yeah? 
So maybe it's a good idea to play bishop e5 first. And then bishop d6, give her that uh, pawn. It's an extra pawn anyway. Like it's um, a center, but uh, we get a clear exchange and we have a good structure. And this move should not be that great because of f4. And my knight is coming to e5. So let's um, give black that. Now we have a lot of squares. We have a lot of great squares and black's bishop on g6 is not that great. So we have a great position. Um, we have extra exchange and we have clear plan how to improve our position further. We just open the lines for the um, for the rooks. And that rook is coming is coming to get black and these pawns are falling and rook goes to d1 to d7. And black is probably just lost here because that bishop um, queen d4, so forcing the exchange because that pawn on g7 is, uh, um, oh, so, um, I don't know, knight g6, knight f6, uh, a lot of tricks here, knight g4, I don't know, um, well, she, she wants to play queen e2, I guess, so let's play knight c4, and grab that um, pawn on a7, 96 and uh, we just grab absolutely everything yeah uh, yeah okay so um so again uh, in the opening uh, uh i think that was a mistake when she tried to save uh, her bishop on f5 she plays bishop g6 and allows me to play bishop b5 and b4 with the tempo i think in that position black usually just takes on c5 and gives me that pair of bishops, but uh, that pawn structure is actually uh, not not quite simple uh, to play. Okay, so we're gonna go on to play our famous hippo system. Absolutely love to play the system on the blitz because you know the moves are so automatic. You just play e6, d6, g6, b6, uh, b6, 97, 97. It all comes out like very simple chess. Okay, and uh, you don't. The thing about the hippo is that um, you don't give your opponent much, you only give him some space, but you keep uh, a lot of good squares for your pieces. For example, after h4, that g4 square is potentially very now good for your knight, yeah? So that knight uh, comes to g4, so it already starts to become a little bit uncomfortable for white, uh, in turn, in, in meaning like what to do with next, right? For example, queen d2, knight g4, Bishop f4, e5, and already, you know, this whole thing in the center becomes messy. So, um, again, Hippo is a very, very um, adaptive opening, and e5, I don't believe in e5, to be honest, um, because I can take twice, take on f3, take on f6, take on d1, but that's probably too much. So, white does sometimes does sacrifice this pawn, but I don't believe in this time. And this should be okay. Ah, maybe white wants to play d5, uh, sometimes being played in such positions, yeah. Uh, white sacrifices the pawn to open the position where he has two bishops and a certain measure of counterplay. Um, in this case, uh, we just uh, probably... Um, I don't have to take anything, I just finished my development, okay? Just finished my development and now I play queen e7 and I play with an extra pawn and I'm a happy man. Um, she cannot take on e5, right? Because I take the knight and take the bishop on d3. So white now has to make a choice um, what she wants to do. She wants to play d5 and play this type of position or she wants to move the bishop somewhere. In any way, I play this move and I need to put my queen probably on e7 because my knight on e6 is uh, protecting a lot of squares. And now we're gonna go for knight c5 and slowly try to push those bishops back. You know, just start start to exchange pieces and go, and preferably get the game into the end game where my extra pawn will be uh, will have a decisive say. So bishop goes to f3. Um, okay, it's interesting. Uh, knight c5 uh, maybe goes for b5. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether to play c5 maybe. Uh, but then my pawn on a6 becomes weak. Um, what else can I do? 
I can try to create some mess with my queen, like queen b4, but for what reason? I don't know. Uh, white wants to play bishop f3, hit my rook, okay, knight c5, b4, knight e4, knight e4 exchanges, mm. yeah, okay, but let's try this, knight c5, if b4, the knight e4, Ah, 94 is impossible. Okay. Yeah. So just, uh, okay, there should be five. Interesting. Um, and I need to exchange something. 95. Okay, let's exchange rooks. Okay, let's start exchanging rooks. Uh, then this knight goes to e8. And we need to get rid of white strong pair of bishops. Okay. So that's what we have to do. Therefore, we exchange. Play queen f6, and we probably can play a5 here to cement our knight on c5. There's nothing hanging, so I can probably just take this pawn on b2. Uh, and the pawn on a4 and pawn on c2 are now hanging in a balance. And of course, we immediately chase white's queen, and if queen e5 and queen f4. So, uh, White's bishop on f3 is now completely, well, I wouldn't say he's completely useless because he's uh, hitting uh, a number of squares, but uh, we force the exchange of the queens, and we have two extra pawns, which should guarantee us um, a winning endgame, okay? Especially with that pawn on a4, quite being quite weak, and um, we can even give that pawn on c7. Of course, she can't take it because of rook c8, but still, that pawn on h5 is also weak, and... Um, we can just grab that pawn. The knight can go to g3 now, create some mating threats. And um, I think uh, this is uh, technically winning position for black anyway. So knight goes to g3, take on a4, have a lot of pawns, we have active rook, um, and a lot of threats. And um, white is just probably lost. Okay, well, okay, I'm not going to take that knight on d4, she probably under it, but still. Uh, okay, uh, we have challenges, I'm not sure about the challenges. Uh, did my opponent manage to catch a rematch in time? I don't know, probably not, yeah? Uh, please wait for your opponent to respond. Yeah, because I need to close this window. Ah, no, okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, back to London. And uh, let's see how my opponent plays this time. c5, e3, knight c6, knight d2. All right, she's going to play bishop f5 again. No, she's not playing bishop f5 again, so she's playing for this. Bishop g3, this is all very well known. Bishop b5, bishop d3 is the main line, bishop b5, I call a set, side line, but okay. Oh, queen c7. Uh, there is such a move, actually. There is such a move. The idea is that uh, black sacrifices this uh, pawn in order to get the strong center. However, uh, I think that the center is actually very strong for me as well. So, especially now that uh, she allows me actually to return my bishop, black usually plays e5, e4, and bishop g4 in this system. Uh, before white manages to play e4 himself, okay? So a6 is uh, probably an inaccurate move. Black should have played e5 immediately because now I have an extra pawn, op open line, very strong open line, and uh, a lot of threats and uh, just clear extra pawn, which is very important. The question is, uh, is what I'm going to do against this bishop g4 threat, right? So that's the only thing. So let's play a3. Allow black to play probably. Okay, so I didn't I didn't want to cast them because I wanted to keep my attacking options open. And uh, but attacking options, I don't see how many of them I have here. And does black want to take on e4? I don't know. Okay, so let's play queen c2. Let's give my opponent the chance, and we're gonna go for the long castle here. And the idea is to put the knight on c4 on d6. That's the idea. 
and bring the queen to d6, uh, d2, a6, and the king to b1. Because I believe that uh, long castling is actually preferable for white in this particular situation. Um, maybe I am wrong, but uh, let's see how this works out, okay? So king b1, bring the king out of the danger of the c file, bring the rook here out of the pin, and, um, ooh, I blunders this thing, right? Um, did I? I have knight b7, but I don't want to give black too many attacking chances, so uh, let's play queen g5, force the threat of queen h6, forces black to take on f3, and uh, she doesn't have time for knight e5 because of queen h6, and then I have time for, yeah, but uh, you don't have time for that because I have queen h6 here, and your king starts to travel in the center, and uh, I think... Um, yeah, but um, who knows, yeah? Maybe maybe this is okay for black. So check, king is 7, f6. Okay, so let's give a check. Improve our queen to h4. Uh, king d7, then I can play bishop f1 with the idea of bishop h3. So black has to probably go back to f8. And then the question is, um, where should my bishop go? Should I just protect him with rook on d1? Probably just protect him and go for this structure. Um, I don't know. This uh, this is actually quite interesting. Huh? The idea is that I wanted to play bishop e2 with the tempo and try to get f4 into the game. Um, she has okay, h8 now. Or queen this. I'm not sure about queen this because after queen f4, she has to... Ah, she has 95. Yeah, she has 95. Then I take, take, f4, bishop... Ooh, it's now actually double-edged and game. Mm. So I misplayed this part. Uh, probably, I had probably a huge advantage, but now black is okay. At least things will get interesting, right? So um, a5 is correct. I have to take, play f4, and e5. And um, this end game is pretty interesting. Uh, black wants to play f6 maybe, so let's put the bishop out of the harm's way. And get ready for that um, doubling of the rooks on the d file. I don't like this move because I was going to hit the pawn on d4 anyway. And I don't see how you're going to protect the pawn. Yeah. Um, no, I still don't see it. And I can take this uh, second pawn also, yeah? Uh, maybe? Yeah, probably. I'm pretty sure I can because uh, that knight on c4 is hanging. Um... Uh, rook b6, bishop b5, take, take, rook b4, and we have extra pawn, and probably very close to winning position here. So rook protects everything, king starts to roll, rook b5, now we change pair of rooks, and Comes completely winning. Oops, no, 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 you don't. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, that's the problem because when you're low on time, you have to start pre moving, and of course, uh, sometimes you don't guess your opponent's move. So, um, so that's uh, that's the danger of the pre moves in, uh, when you're low on time. Okay, so let's see how she goes against Hippo this time. Hippo, my favorite opening. Right, f4 is actually a very dangerous system in this particular case. Um, I usually play here and then I go for f early f5 because white is ready to play f5 at some point himself. So I have to play f5 here, but that might be not the case. Still, that's the way I play this position. I, I usually don't try not to allow white to play f5 here. So now we continue our development again after a4. You get the square on b4 for your knight. And if the knight goes to b4, then I'm hitting e4, d3. These are key squares in this position. And try to force white to play e5, which is not bad, because it closes my bishop. On the other hand, it closes the position, opens my own bishop. And uh, again, I need to get one bishop um, so, that, so that I can, I can feel comfort comfortable in this particular uh, game. If I get one of the bishops, then I can start playing d6 and not being afraid of all the little tricks that white, white might have. So we need to grab this bishop, and we probably need to exchange a pair of knights here. 
and start to think about uh, getting um, our bishop g7 to the game. This is perfect square for our uh, knight. Now I can play d5 because of c5, then bishop a6. I get my second bishop into the game. And um, my knight on b4 is, uh, is, is great, right? So we play h6 and try to prepare g5 sometimes, maybe. But uh, actually, this move is uh, played in order to take the g5 square from white's knight. So I can, I can prepare to move my um, rook to f7, king to h7, bishop to e7, and prepare for this g5 push later on. So that's the plan. Um, so she wants to play knight a2, maybe, and try to get rid of my knight on b4. But that, yes, have to play this. And now I'm completely ready to take on c5, right? I'm really ready to take this pawn. And... Um, d4 is actually now an option, because knight d5 is a little trick, and the queen takes and rook d7 and gets to d8, uh, to d1. But in this particular case, uh, the question is, should I take e3 or should I take on f4? And that's a dilemma, because I have, this knight on d5 is really great. And if I take that pawn on f4, then white pawns become really weak. On the other hand, uh, where does that queen go? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if queen goes to c2, oh, she grabs the pawn. Oh, yeah, she is actually right. She should. Yeah, she 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 can grab this pawn. Wow. Ooh, that's a problem. Um, okay, so let's grab an exchange and try to improve our rook. Finally, get the rook to d5. Uh, she is ready to play b4. Mm. Okay, still, rook d5 has to be played, and if b4, then I have to take this pawn, because now your pawns are, your pawns are not there, and um, she wants to play rook e1, maybe, uh, I don't know, queen back to d7, I have more time, but I have, uh, ooh, bishop b5, bishop b7, what are the threats? I don't know. Uh, queen g3 is coming. Bishop b5 probably should be played. Because I need to get that rook on the a file going. And also I want to play bishop a4 and uh, eliminate the defender of that knight on d4. So let's try to do that. Because once that the defender is eliminated, my rooks are starting to get into the game. Okay, so rook goes to a2 now. Rook d1 and queen to d5. That's the plan. And um, yeah, she's probably right. So let's hit this on. Ooh, um, I don't know. Rook e2. So that bishop on f6 is actually quite annoying because um, it creates all sorts of threats against my king. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but uh, let's try to infiltrate with our queen, because our rook is on the e2 file already. Right, so let's uh, hit this queen. And we can actually play rook d1. But will that be enough? Well, I don't know. So let's play queen a1 instead. Uh, take rook b2, rook b3. Probably exchange the pair of rooks. Maybe just take this pawn, yeah, because that pawn holds the c5 pawn. Um, g5, open the king, take the bishop, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So um, I don't know. Um, probably a good idea to offer a draw uh, next game, just to make sure you know it's not a complete. Um, um, you know, zero score for my opponent, and um, I don't know. Well, it looks uh, easier, right? But the score doesn't tell the whole story. I think my opponent plays really well, especially in the openings, and then the middle games, she has a feel for where the pieces go and everything. But because you know, it takes time to reach those decisions, while um, I still had a huge experience, you know, playing all sorts of positions. So I have a more automatic feel for where pieces have to go without uh, double checking myself. So that gives me a huge advantage, of course. Okay.
All right. Um, yeah, so time is actually a huge factor, which in this case is um, an advantage for me. When I play uh, the strong grandmasters who are very quick and uh, who can flag me a lot, like Nakamura and Naradinsky, that becomes a problem because uh, I'm always low on, lower in time. And when you have no increments, uh, they just uh, flag me. Uh, I think there is a challenge here. So I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, there's a challenge. He challenged me. Okay, so let's accept it. So we're going to, I don't know. I don't see, ah, there, 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 there we have this button, yeah? So, so let's go for this uh, thing. And 92, and let's grab this one again. So e6, 94, bishop c5, that's the, that's how usually is played. Um, maybe I can improve with knight on b3, try to protect that pawn on c5, maybe. Maybe it's possible, I don't know, so. Because knight b3, bishop c5, c3, take, take, and queen d4, I have pair of bishops, so maybe. Okay, so let's try knight b3, knight b3 here, just to play this position for the pair of bishop advantage. And um, yeah, a5, a4 is pretty standard, and then we have knight d4. Now we follow the game, like originally, and that one on a5 is actually potentially quite weak. Mm, actually, it's quite a mess here um, because rook c8 probably has to be played. Or queen c8, okay, now I have the c5 move. Do I? Yeah, probably I have to play c5. Try to get things uh, open and nice and create some knight b5 potential threats there. Uh, so black probably has to take on c4, bishop c4. But with the queen on c8, that, 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 that is a very potential um, uh, thing for rook c1, right? And, um, okay, let's play um, logically. Let's finish development. And after bishop e7, rook c1, knight b3. I don't like black position. Yeah, she, she should have just taken on c4, not allowed me to take on d5. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to make a next move and offer a draw because I think white has a huge advantage here. And um, and hopefully wish our opponent a lot of luck in the future. And um, oops, c1 and we offer a draw. Yeah, because this position is really just really bad for black. So let's hope my opponent accepts. And um, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to offer and try, actually. I don't know the rules, but uh, I think it's normal. I mean, it's a tradition of chess, right? In the last games, always in World Championships, it's been known that you, you can offer and draw, especially when you have a much better position. Yeah. So I think it's, it's quite OK. So let's see. Um, I'm not sure what my opponent is thinking, um, but let's see what she does because the time is running. I have four minutes. Why I have four minutes? Didn't we start with three minutes? I think I played so fast, yeah? Hmm. Okay. Um, well, if black declines, so the only way for, for my opponent to play is to develop the bishop, then you take on c6. Okay, so she does decline, and in that case, we play for a win, of course. And rook goes to c7, and that knight on d5 starts to be really pinned. I can also play bishop d6 to make sure black doesn't castle at all. So rook c7, strong, bishop f5, queen d5, bishop b6, bishop d7, bishop d7, rook d7, it's winning. And black can resign now. Rook takes d7, and queen takes a8. Hope we draw again. Okay. All right. So um, thank you for my opponent, and uh, I hope uh, you guys watched the games, had some fun, some maybe some educational experience, and uh, see you guys uh, in the future. Okay. So that's Kyle Kamsky playing Dark Nolan Count. You know, I have some greedy uh, remarks on my profile. 
absolutely hate cheaters so that's why i put that uh, note there and um just you know you play chess for fun and you just play for yourself and if you cheated chess and just means you should do something else in your life except playing chess okay that's that's it yeah okay thank you bye bye